Number five is going to have you use the power reducing formulas and the directions ask you to write it as first powers of cosine. So we're getting rid of the squares, we're writing it all in terms of cosine raised to the first power. So because it's telling you to use the power reducing formulas, you want to be familiar with those and we're going to plug in a power reducing formula for each. There's, a, there's one for sine squared and there's another one for cosine squared. So you have to actually use a different one for each. The first thing we'll do is put in the power reducing formula for the sine squared, which is one minus cosine of two theta over two. This one is one plus cosine two theta over two. So I use a different power reducing formula, one for the sine squared, one for the cosine squared. Now that I'm done with that, I'm, uh, I'm going to just simplify this by multiplying it across the top, across the bottom. So if you multiply across the bottom, we just get a four. Now if you multiply across the top, you get a one, you get plus cosine two theta minus cosine two theta, that's gonna cancel out. Negative and positive, you get a minus, and that's gonna be cosine squared of two theta. Now the unfortunate thing is we can't leave this as our answer because it's asked us to write it as first powers of cosine. We still have a, a square there. So we wanna do another uh, step here by putting in another power reducing formula. The first thing I'll do is I'm gonna split up the fraction and I'm gonna write this as a one fourth minus a one fourth cosine squared of two theta just to make it a little bit easier so I don't have a fraction over a fraction when I work with the the other power reducing formula. So I have a one fourth, and I just divided basically each of them by a quarter. This one here, I'm gonna put in another power reducing formula. Now this, notice when I use cosine squared, I end up with a one plus cosine, but look what happens inside the, the, for the theta. Now the original theta was just a one theta, and it doubled when I used the power reducing formula, and it doubled to uh, two theta. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with this one, except that when I use the power reducing formula here, because the original angle inside was a two theta, when I write this out, that'll become a four theta because that's how the formula works. The power reducing formula, you always end up with double the angle from what you started with. Uh, so writing that out, I get one fourth minus one quarter, and then I'll put the power reducing formula in here, which is one plus cosine of four theta, because the original one inside was a two theta, this always doubles when you use the formula there, and we get this. The last thing we need to do is just multiply uh, across top, across the bottom, and we get one quarter minus one plus cosine four theta, all that over eight, because we're multiplying the bottom one. It's not necessary to get common denominators. If you, could, if you wanted to do that, you could just multiply that by two over two and then combine it together with this negative you would distribute through if you want to do it that way. But this is actually fine on a test. I would take that as an answer. So no need to get common denominators there.